Okay. Well, thank you. Um, welcome to the outreach committee meeting on the March 6th. <laughs> um, we can go to the next slide. We are a community focused on the open source licensed projects, security data in use in accelerating the adoption of the confidential computing through open collaboration. Every member is welcome. Every project meeting our criteria is welcome. We're a transparent and collaborative community and we welcome everyone's participation here. And here is a um, Linux Foundation antitrust policy. So if you have any questions around that, please feel free to reach out to the Linux Foundation folks on this call. Okay, today we have our um, regular updates um, on six, but we also wanted to touch up, touch on the um, Asia Pacific friendly time zone that we brought up a few meetings ago. So let's get into that. Oh, our outreach minute uh, from last meeting has been resolved. All right. Um, so I believe that Saul has sent out a poll um, to the members here, and we have gotten two slots, which is um, two uh, preferred slot, which is 8 a.m. Pacific and 12 p.m. Pacific, which is the one is current time, and then the other one is not so different. But I don't know if uh, Saul got enough information to even gauge this interest. So I really encourage our members to um, send this the meeting poll to your Asia um, Asia contact, your your rep from Asia or anyone that you would like for them to join the Asia friendly time. Please send them the poll here, and then. Um, going to try and copy and paste in the chat but we would need more information if not if we're not getting a lot of interest on this APEC friendly time zone we might not proceed with this idea and I'm thinking we might just go um, hold <clears throat> an additional meeting uh, perhaps once or twice a year any feedback or comments on that I think one one uh, one way to to look at the set the, your second uh, suggestion was uh, would be you know if there are big um, meetings like PET Summit Singapore uh, that we're going to be at we can maybe try and hold a an in person or partly in person uh, meeting around one of those or maybe OSS uh, Asia or something like that that might be a way of uh, kind of encouraging things. Yeah, that's. That's a good idea. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave it there if nobody nobody has any other input or feedback. Okay. And then Leo is leading the meeting. Uh, yeah, I mean that's okay. Thank you very much. That's okay. Funny. Uh so yeah, I mean we are going to do the SIG updates, right? From now on. So first off, we have the SIG web presence update uh, for today. Uh, I think Jen is going to present us, right, the uh, analytics uh, for February from our website. Um, Jen, do you want to share or do you want me to just open it for discussion? Yeah, I was going to say I can share. Just give me a okay, second. Let me, let me oh, it says, sharing. yeah, so you'll have to stop sharing. Okay. Um, good to meet mm. everybody. Um, this is our first um, time really tracking these metrics. So they will definitely um, hopefully grow quite a bit over time. Um, but what I did um, was, um, so I joined the, the project um, after the first of the year and have just spent the last uh, little bit of time just kind of getting my bearings and kind of seeing what's happening. So I did a little bit of comparison between January, February, uh, so that we can benchmark things going forward. Um, you all do um, an email newsletter every month. And in January, the list was uh, double the size 
um, and there was a lot of bounce rates um, in January. So this month, um, the delivery was just over 1,200 and the unsubscribe rate was obviously significantly less. So I would say um, that this kind of 1,200 is your active uh, subscriber list. So um, might be good for us to try to think about uh, what we want to grow that list to and, and what other things we want to maybe be sending them um, in addition to the newsletter and maybe coordinate around some of your conferences and whatnot um, to get you know more people signed up. And then what I'd like to maybe do mid-year, if it makes sense to you all, is uh, maybe do a short survey out to the community to find out what they want more of, less of, um, that kind of helps us guide content and so forth. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, we use HubSpot internally um, at the LF to manage everything. Um, they have uh, significantly increased a lot of their uh, ability to pull good data for us. So um, what's interesting this month is uh, when I was taking a look at everything, um, one of this, this is a screenshot, but um, according to HubSpot, um, your audience loved this this last month's uh, newsletter. So I wanted to put it in there that I think your content's really strong. Um, and they, they clearly from the HubSpot analysis, um, take it for what it's worth, um, but that um, this was well read. Uh, some of the factors that drive that is uh, time, time spent viewing the email, uh, open rates, things of that nature. But you can see um, you had a very high uh, viewer rate. So when you look at you know red plus skimmed, that's almost 100%. So, so again, that 1,200 is, is extremely captive audience. So that's really great to, to see. Um, and we're starting, I, th I think, from a position of strength, for sure. So congratulations, you guys. That's really good. Um, just looking a little bit at open rates from uh, January to February. Again, you'll see it's quite significantly up. Um, so that is the trend that we want to continue to see. Um, and unique opens versus total opens. Um, this just means some people opened it more than once. Um, click rate, um, again, our click rates, this is what we want to try to increase. Um, I personally like to go for a 4% click through rate um, versus what they have here is kind of their average is three, um, but I like to kind of set that bar a little high um, and then just kind of keep growing it, keep growing it. Um, nothing too surprising here um, as far as um, desktop versus mobile ratios. Pretty consistent. Um, I would say your group might be leaning higher on the mobile side. Um, the only reason that, that would matter is when we're thinking about content, uh, we probably want to be thinking about how to organize the content in the newsletter to be very bite-sized, readable um, chunks of information, um, particularly for that mobile user. That'll keep that'll keep them engaged. So we can kind of work on that as we as we define things. A um, couple other things to kind of look at. Um, again, take this with a grain of salt because what HubSpot does is they compare uh, uh, CCC to all the other LF projects that are sending out newsletters. And most projects don't send out newsletters. The larger uh, projects tend to do more newsletter. The other projects tend to rely more on social. Um, but it'll just, again, it's just kind of interesting to see uh, kind of where we we fit. Um, so this this is kind of the key area to, to focus on, but the open rate obviously is very good. Click-throughs, again, we're a little under where we want to be. Um, your bounces and unsubscribes after January um, obviously um, are you know right where we want them to be. So really, when you kind of take a look at this, it's the click-through rates that we want to um, improve. And then I just included this graph here. Again, it just kind of shows you, um, oh, I went one too far, go back, sorry. Uh, you can see that in November, the click-through rate was five. So uh, we should probably spend a little time looking at what we announced in November um, and see, you know, kind of where that fits. But you've been pretty consistently just under that three. So that tells me we've got some work to do there. So I'll I'll kind of pause in case you all have have questions, but it just it's it's an interesting benchmark. I wouldn't live live by it. Um because you don't always want to compare everything to the LF <laughs> from a community standpoint, but it's one metric that we have. Right. Thank you. I just posted on the chat that I intentionally sent to all all subscribers for January edition only, just so that we because we kind of rebranded our newsletter. 
I wanted to get into everyone's inbox, even though we might have gotten a lot of unsubscribe that time. But February, I set it back to our normal, only sent to engaged subscriber thing. So that's why maybe the data was showing that. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, it is really hard to keep an email list up to date and active. So um, I really applaud uh, what the work that you are doing because again, your your list is really solid. Most most of them aren't um, aren't that healthy. A uh, quick look at Google Analytics. So again, kind of comparing January to February, not a big difference. Um, again, February has less, um, at least, you know, has two days less. Um, and I did this last week. So I would kind of consider you flat in terms of views and users. Um, hopefully we'll start to change that. Um, again, we'll kind of do a running total and then I'll do, you know, um, kind of a, a quarterly six month, but you can see here, um, lines nine and 10, and then seven and eight in January, those are uh, uh, blogs that um, show up in both months. Um, everything else is pretty much the same um, in terms of number of views and users. Um, but those those in the purple box are what's different. So you can it's see, the ranking, right? Yeah, it's the ranking of, of your top 10. So you can see um, that uh, lines five and four resources, white papers, those are you know, highly visited as are the projects and about the members. Yeah, that's and really good. Yeah. At the same time, I mean, I think it highlights the importance for us to have new content on the blogs, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that page about, you know, the CCC end of year blog post and then the FOSDEM highlights, uh, they, are, they, they all, I mean, both of them appeared, right, in the top 10. Absolutely. And uh, do we do these correspond to uh, specific links from the newsletters? Um, they do um, in this aspect. So your um, your open source highlights um, definitely do um, the welcoming of Sal um, correlate very well with the newsletter. And um, I'll try to track that. I need to find a, a, an easier way to to track that each month. Um, but you'll also see that the attestation was a strong landing page for you all in both months. Okay. And um, Jen, I need to learn how to add the link when I add the button in the newsletter. I need to add the hyperlink that are trackable, right? Because right now I'm just leading back to the website. Gotcha. Okay. We'll work on that. And I would get, again, over time, you're going to see more trends, right? We're just kind of comparing a couple months. So six months from now, you know, we'll, we'll have a, a lot of good information to look at, but what I would say is, you know, generally speaking, that the site is straightforward. It's very clean. And I think it's easy for people to find what they're looking for. Great. New users, again, January to February, it's growing. Um, again, this was pulled last week, so I would say you are fairly uh, uh, flat in terms of new users um, as well as users, but it's, again, turning in the right direction. You can kind of see based on kind of where you get some some blips here on the radar. Those are pretty much tied to um, newsletter or posts. Uh, website views themselves, again, looking good. You're trending up. Um, more event counts in February than you had in, I'm sorry, more event counts in January than February. Um, again, I wouldn't look um, too much into this just because February was a shorter month, but it's trending, you know, trending well. You're not going negative for sure. And then just a couple things on social. Um, these were the top five posts to kind of answer your other question. Um, for LinkedIn. So the year long exploration that uh, just happened um, last week, it's getting a, a really high click through rate. Uh, impressions are good. Uh, the PET summit invitation is well received. The Fujitsu announcement was well received. And then the summit uh, participation. So this to me is super encouraging. 
because this is the first of four blogs. Yeah, and I love that series. And I was actually thinking about this as um, putting into our new email subscriber sequence. So put this like four blog series into um, like the email sequence for a new subscribers. Mm -hmm. So I would like to set that up um, after we deploy all these four. Right. Um, what I'll also share with you is um, I work on um, two other projects, AI and data and PyTorch. And specifically with PyTorch, the series always perform better than a one-off. Um, because I think you, and I think you have a similar audience in terms of knowledge, they want knowledge. So, um, I think as you all are planning and out there, it, it's great to promote the, um, you know, the other things that you all are doing, but I think there's a lot of thought leadership that, um, this project has to offer the universe. And so, um, be interesting to explore more of those series. I know they're a little bit challenging to pull together. Um, but once you have them, again, we can recycle them. We can use them over and over. We can do infographics when we come up with some, you know, anything that makes sense to promote there. Um, the other thing that we could explore, um, Kate, to your point, once we have all four of them out there, is we could do a small LinkedIn budget to um, boost them slash promote them. So that is something for you all to keep in mind. I think, I mean, you don't have to do a lot. Um, the spend can be very small. But if we have it set up, we can kind of, hey, if we get, you know, if we see we have strong um, showing on this series, I think it might be great to boost them. And that kind of gets yeah. you out beyond the LF, right? Makes sense. Um, and really, that's kind of my my recommendations. Um, so for the newsletter, we've kind of talked about um, having live links at the top section. Um, this is what the Linux Foundation does. And you click on each one of these and it takes you right to it within the newsletter. Um, I think that's great. Um, creating as many call to actions, Kate, to your point, as, as we can. And then um, after, after we do March, I think we should set some social goals um, just so we have something to, to shoot for. Um, other thoughts around, you know, more thought leadership with your keyboard members, promoting your event speakers, if we can get you know a little bit ahead of some of these events that you're doing when it's announced that they're speaking, we can create some speaker cards and promote those on social. Um, and then something to consider um, maybe quarterly is doing like an ask me anything or a kind of state of confidential computing like quarterly. Um, again, that'll grow your audience a little bit and gives you additional content. So those are just some things for you all to, to think about. Great. Um, a quick question about the um, Twitter. Are we active and how active are we on X? Um, I didn't put Twitter in there because it's so low. I mean, it's like <laughs> 10, 9. Um, we can talk about whether that's the right audience for you all. Um, that's what I was thinking. Again, my experience with AI data and PyTorch is that technical content, particularly in the AI space, they're very heavy Twitter. And then the LinkedIn is more uh, business um, community driven. So, um, yeah, there just wasn't anything really worth reporting on, on Twitter, to be honest with you, you know, we're still posting on Twitter. Um, but you know, that might be a conversation for you all to have. Is it really right. so, the area you want to be? Right. Is, has it been the content just kind of a duplicate into both channels? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So maybe that might be the reason why. So, um, I would say if you're going to, if you want to boost your Twitter, it needs to be more technically focused. Um, so for example, like for PyTorch, when we have like a community blog or like a, a use case blog, we don't post those on Twitter because they don't perform. We only do those on LinkedIn. And you start to see over time trending wise what's happening. Uh, but because right now your 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 Twitter slash X is is so low, there's nothing to really report. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. On, on the event speakers, I'm hugely behind that, but uh, I really think it's very important. Uh, um, the thing we don't know enough is when people are speaking. So uh, please let us know if you or a colleague is speaking about confidential computing about anyth anywhere, frankly. So yeah. uh, please, please, please tell us so that we can promote it. We, uh, we, we'd love to have more of this, uh, Kate, right? Uh, more of this material too. To share. Absolutely. Yeah. Not only that, we, we have done 
promoting a blog that was published by other member company, but we amplified it through our channel as well. So the, you know, all things CC is where we want to make it this place as a home. Yeah, yeah and, and I mean, if we go, I mean, yeah, I think Jen, Jen stopped sharing because uh, you ended your presentation, right? Yeah. So did you Ryan, want me to I go mean, back there? No, no, that's okay. I mean, if if Rian, uh, you can just uh, share the minutes. I think we have links uh, for anyone to send content for us, right? Um, oh, content request form. Yes, the content request form. Exactly. So we have the content request form here. This is the link uh, for anyone in the community to send us. I will post it. Yeah. Uh, you know, to send us information to be published in our newsletter or in the websites or blog posts, uh, uh, event presentations, anything like that. Yeah. And in, and so I'm, I'm seeing the note that you've got a speaker that's speaking. Um, you can uh, do one of two things there. For I, I think for, for something like that, I don't think we need the content request form. I think that creates a step we probably don't need. You can just Slack that to me. Yeah. Um, so what sure. I really need is I need the speaker um, um, photo, the but you know a photo of the speaker and what the session is. So you can slack it to me or shoot me an email. Um, and if I have just like you know twenty four to forty eight hours to flip it around, um, mm -hmm. I think that's what we should be promoting. Um, I can also add that uh, to the events page under that event. Um, so that's something that we can do. Um, one other thought that doesn't really have to do with the analytics, but uh, we were talking about how to maybe promote some of these events on the website itself. Um, we could use that banner on the event page and promote an yeah. event um, because it's just kind of a wasted space. Honestly, it just literally says events. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we could rotate um, um, what we want to promote. So whatever that upcoming event is, we could say upcoming event. Yeah, I love that. And I that thank you for bringing that up because I I tagged you in that email with RSA because I think this was what I was thinking of. And and I, I like that idea. We can incorporate that for sure. Yeah. So if you all want to promote the RSA event, um, I can do that on the website because you are getting people to come there. Right. And it's consistent. Uh, so I think it's it's a good thing to have on, yep. the, on the website more prominently. And OSS North America as well. Right, uh, we have a whole yeah. list of events and we, we would like to include that. So let's think about design-wide how, how we want to put it up there. Great. Okay, all right. I mean, any other questions or comments on the web presents update? Uh, thank you so much, Jen. Really helpful, really interesting too. You're yeah, welcome. So. I'm, yep. I'm enjoying, I'm you, enjoying get, getting to work on all of this. It's fun. Good. Thank you, Jen. So let's move on Rian, to the next one. Um, yeah, the events update. So that's probably the kind of content that we want to promote, right? <laughs> that we were just mentioning. Uh, so this is the list of uh, events uh, that we participated and that we are planning to have uh, some kind of presence from the Computational Computing Summit. Uh, we will have a more detailed update on the PET Summit Series uh, Europe edition that happened uh, last week, right? Uh, yep. in, in the following slides, uh, and we do have, I mean, the list of events up until the mid of the year here. Oh, so for the rest of the year here, right? Uh, I, the only, I mean, the only thing I want to probably check, I don't know, I mean, Sal is not here, so I don't know if we have an answer on that, but I mean, do we have, uh, for the RSA booth, do we have uh, demos uh, set up for that? I mean, or is this still being discussed? Yeah, I can update I, I, a little bit. Um, so we have an option to place the demo station if there is an interest from the member companies that they want to bring in. And we also uh, were checking, I believe Sal is checking with projects and, and you know, many other engagement that has ha as many engagement that we can get into our CCC booth. That would be great. So I'll cover that in the next later slide for the RSA, okay. but basically we have a commitment with the RSA um, conference with, with the social media and newsletter cross promotion. And we have actually, um, we, I didn't add it, I forgot to add it there, but we are publishing a blog 
on RSS blog uh, page. So that's going to be huge. That has a, a lot of uh, reader. So that's yeah, going to be worth. Uh, um, so Mike and Saul will be working on that. And um, we have a CCC booth, which we would like to leverage for the demos, but also we like to have a little the member activity, which we call it the member company password activity. So we will include your booth info or wherever you are present in RSA, we would like to cross promote there. We would like to send people over there as well. Um, so, yeah. Yep, okay. absolutely. Good. We will, the blog to point to the company that exists, yeah, for sure. Right. Um... Another thing I want to remind is that uh, one week from now, we have OC3 happening, right? Uh, the virtual event. Yep. So, yeah, well, today yeah. I want, I, I was hoping that we could kind of go over Sal's presentation, but I I think that might be shared with us separately on Monday. Okay. Let me know if I'm wrong, Rian, <laughs> if I read wrong. I think you're you're absolutely right. Okay, but everyone uh, should get other... an uh, idea from her um, from um, the draft, though, the abstract. Okay, I mean, before we jump into the PET summit uh, recap, I mean, there are there any other comments or questions about uh, the events here? Manu. Yeah, okay, hi, so guys. let's jump in. Oh, go uh, ahead, Manu. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. Uh, so the panel for Identiverse came together, which is really nice. Uh, there's another opportunity in October that uh, it's a it's somewhat related. It's Authenticate Conference. The Authenticate Conference is the you know organized by the FIDO Alliance. Um, mm. The FIDO Alliance is of course about all you know <clears throat> cryptographic authentication type capabilities. Uh, there is a, uh, a at least a couple, two or three dimensions to, you know, the argument of uh, that, that that all authentication should actually happen within a confidential computing environment, because you're making the most critical decision whether to let somebody in or not with the right credentials and verifying those credentials. And there's the, uh, a key management challenge that uh, we know firsthand that the uh, FIDO Alliance has that can only be solved with confidential computing type technology. So I was wondering, uh, Mike, if you know we would try, if we could try, or if we would be interested in doing the panel thing again uh, in October. Yeah, it sounds interesting. Um, it looks like it clashes with KubeCon North America. I'm just trying to find out where KubeCon North America, which is in Salt Lake City. So as long, you know, it might be possible to do uh, to do both. There's a MedTech conference as well, which is a possible. But yeah, let's uh, let's put in for it. I like it. Let's do it. Okay. So I and uh, Steve Wilson uh, will help us moderate the Identiverse one. He's also plugged into the Authenticate uh, organization. Right. I don't think he's a reviewer of content or anything. But so uh, we need to move fast on this. The deadline is Monday. So I'll try to work this weekend on something and then we can see. Okay, if, uh... I am, I'm unavailable Friday and Monday morning. I have some time Monday afternoon, my time. Your time being UK, right? UK so time, yeah. Morning here, okay. Uh, well, let's see if we can so If you get stuff here. to me over the weekend, I can look at it. As long as you put it at high priority, I can get to it. Uh, on okay Monday, okay and and you know if 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 we can great if we can't uh let's, you know. let's take this off offline but yes absolutely let's go that's good Thanks. really like it cool. sorry no no okay thank you manu lara you're, you're on mute, mute. <laughs> now we cannot hear you Nope, you might be that. double muted. Yep. Oh, now we can hear you. Okay, now, okay, <laughs> fantastic. Um, okay, sorry about that. Um, regarding OC3, uh, the um, CCC, since this year uh, we are um, silver sponsors, uh, we have the um, booth as well. Now, I was already, since, you know, 
both roles uh, here. I was already setting up um, the booth, but um, I was also looking at our YouTube or generally for content because I will uh, imagine that most of you kind of either know OC3 or generally the look and feel of a virtual event. But um, so we have the option of a booth with um, either a presentation or a YouTube video or some kind of content. So kind of wanted to ask if you either have ideas or um, yeah, maybe some something comes to mind. Uh, you want specifically YouTube video to link it to the virtual booth for CCC? Uh, yeah, th that would be an option, yes. Okay. Um, do we have an... Um, I'm not really following in the the our, our assets, but um, is there any like a highest performing video that we have published under Linux Foundation for CCC or under YouTube playlist? I don't know what we have, but um, who can who can check if we have a compelling thing to? Tie so because to um. I didn't look exactly at views and stuff, but I did look at our YouTube and of course there's uh, some stuff, uh, but it's very like, you know, like that topic specific, like a specific webinar or something like that. There is nothing really like presenting this CCC. Yeah. So uh, I'm was... happy to record one. Um, that's certainly doable. Um, if you'd like a general webinar about CCC and we should probably have one anyway frankly um, can you do it uh, by, yeah, that, that's by a good... Tuesday that's a bit tight <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I I'm might be able to I mean how, how long how long do you need you need 15 minutes uh, no, I mean uh, something like a couple of minutes would be enough it's more you know to intrigue people to yeah, to then search okay. more so after. So e e email me with a brief um, today. I probably have time okay. tomorrow morning to put something out together tomorrow morning. A, okay. a brief teaser great. on the CCC. I can't promise, but I'll, but please email me today yeah. with a brief and I'll do what I can, okay? Okay, thank you so much. And then generally just a uh, <clears throat> shout out to please uh, register to OC3, generally. <clears throat> Thanks. Yep. Thank you, Lara. The email actually just went out just uh, as we started the meeting today. Thank you, Kate. Okay, so let's move on. I think, uh, yeah, PET Europe feedback, that's probably Mike, right? As we don't have Sal today. I think it probably is, yep. <laughs> so, uh, it was it was very good. So uh, a num number of things. We uh, we had a, a presentation by Simon Gallagher of Microsoft, which went down very well. Uh, we did two panels, uh, one specifically on CCC, um, which was great. Uh, the TBD was um, Bertrand Foin um, from Secretarium. He's not a member, but they are their confidential computing folks, and they, they absolutely know that know their stuff. That went down very well. Uh, some really good questions afterwards. Um, Sal hosted a roundtable, and we had a, a more general panel as well. Really good engagement. Some lots of interesting people there. Many more people uh, from Europe than we thought. We thought it was going to be kind of strongly uh, UK banking, given where it was, which is kind of in the square mile, right in you know, the center of uh, a banking time, London. But lots of EU folks. Um, really good representation. Some good startups from other people in the PET community. Um, but we were we we a enjoyed it and b thought it was a good conference. Uh, we hosted uh, co-hosted the welcome reception, so I got to stand up and say a bit about the CCC. Had a couple of members, uh, a number of members who were there, and uh, oh, there we go, some pictures, uh, and uh, and at least one, possibly two uh, new members who might turn up as well. Uh, we also uh, managed to video. Um, and record some of the sessions uh, with stuff that we put together rather short notice. So we're trying to get those videos and audio clear, uh, cleaned up so that we can put them on the website. 
uh, and also do um, transcripts. So, uh, yep, it was it was really interesting. Um, you know, people don't know about confidential computing, even at these things. So it was a really good opportunity to talk to people who are interested in these issues about what we do. So worthwhile conference. Okay. I have a quick Jen? question. Yeah. yeah. Um, we use a... Um... Um, we use Otter Otter to do a the transcript. Do you need a transcript made of the video? Oh no no that's that's easy. Uh, the the problem is not that. The problem the audio was pretty dodgy because of how we had to set it up. I, I've got Buzz which does a, at least as well as Otter, Otter so that we, that's no problem with that. But thank you for the offer. Uh, the other thing was that Kisiko, who organized it, um, have offered to help us promote the video and do any uh, audio and, or video uh, editing we want as well for free. So that's always nice, too. That's great. OK. Great. Thank you, Mike. No problem. So, so Mike, um, would you do this again next year? Yes. <laughs> that's kind of an easy one. <laughs> uh, and I think that, you know, we, and luckily we can't get to the North American version because it's at the same time as RSA. Um, but the uh, we've got the Singapore one coming up in July as well, which is going to be very interesting. Looking forward to going so back I would, to that. I would like to, since this is going to be happening, like, you know, repeatedly yep. every year, I would like to capture our uh, KPIs, like whatever the metrics that we have collected and we can shoot for, we, that'll help our strategy for next year so if we can absolutely work on that. let's let's talk on talk about that i love it we should definitely be collecting uh, as you say data going forward and improving what we're doing like it thank you any questions yeah sorry i was in mute so if no questions, uh, let's move on. Right, Mike Farron jones do you have any updates for the tech doc seek? None whatsoever. No, no response to, well, I think there was one response to even a call for a meeting. So uh, no, there is no, uh, there is no update. Um, so, so I should, sorry, Kate. I'll go for it. I was going to say that there is a piece of work happening via the TAC, which is putting together the gloss, a glossary of uh, key terms. We're discussing that on Thursday, uh, tomorrow, if anyone's interested in, in coming along to that. We've got initial initial definitions, which I've put together based on a variety of inputs, uh, and uh, we, we want to... Uh, to get those together, and that's certainly a useful thing to be promoting via this SIG uh, when we when we have that. But we we technical discussions first. Okay. Um, yep. MFJ, how can we how can we support to move this project forward? Well, I could do it all myself. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean I don't <laughs> need to be a say, I don't need to be a don't smart say ass. things like that. I don't need to be, a, I'm not trying to be a smart ass. I'm trying, I mean, I am, uh, you know, mm -hmm. disappointed, um, you know, by, you know, by the, the lack of response. So in, in the meantime, you know, it's not, uh, you know, there's a lot of other things going on and I would imagine everybody else has a lot going on, but, um, you know, if we are, if this community is going to move the ball forward, people are going to have to carve out chunks of their day to to work on these projects. And uh, um, so, yeah. Sorry, sorry. So, it's the the problem is the LF research is not getting responses from. No, this is this is a companies. different. This is, no, this is a different. Okay, I thought you were talking about a different thing. So the use case. Sorry, the use case report is proceeding. So LF. So. LF research is, you know, amazingly, if you um, you pay somebody, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to do something for you, they do it for you. Um, so they have been great and stepping up and, you know, we've conducted several interviews, you know, we're a little bit on 
a hiatus for a week while the main interviewer is is on a vacation, but it is proceeding apace. And um, we're getting some really you know, infer- you know interesting information, and I think they're getting an idea of how they're going to to execute the final piece. So the use case paper um, is is working. You know, we're we're getting that done. There was another the the other question was um you know calls for a tech doc strategy and you know do we need generalized updates and things like that is a is a different question I see. I see. so uh, one piece of advice uh, mike doesn't always work but it does sometimes work in this community which is that put together a straw man and get people to uh, uh, disagree with it a straw straw person uh and it's not the same as having the meetings, but at least you've then got something which, if people don't agree with it, then, well, they that's their problem. And you don't need to spend too long on it either. Um, but it's it sometimes will get things moving. Don't guarantee it, but that's what I often do uh, in this context. Yeah. Right. And I was going to ask, how confident is LF of published date or project timeline to be finished around May timeframe? I I think it's it's pretty solid. I mean the you know talking to um, Suzanne, who's the main interviewer. You know I think she's it, the the parameters are becoming more clear for her, and you know she sees. You know, I think she's getting a much more better a much better view of how she wants to execute it, and once you know I don't think the the bottleneck is their production schedule. I think the bottleneck will be the approval loops of the people who are being interviewed. Got it. Okay. I only mention it because we have another engagement with the Pet Summit North America, like uh, Mike mentioned. We are engaging with the conference, but in a virtual, we are hosting virtual webinar and we were deciding on the topic and we were leaning towards covering um, use case so that we can also use that opportunity to promote our use case white paper that's okay. going to be published in may so that's why i'm asking about yeah. the timeline yeah i think you know it's definitely our drive to date is to have something ready for that um and i'll keep the the feet to the fire on that one okay thank you okay thank you mike any other questions or comments for him, Mike? So moving on to the demo sig. I don't think we have but one today. Or I do so. so. I, I think yeah. I, I, I see this as a Palan and Sal to be the owner of the demo conversation. And this needs to happen at the tech. So I'm not part of the tech meeting. But if, if any of y'all are, um, please keep that in mind. And we want to incorporate our project demos. And, and as you all just heard, we have a several events that has an opportunity to showcase. So would like to get that plan in place um, when we can. Yep. So let's move on to the next one, Ria. Okay, so I think, yeah, I think that's the end of it, right? Because we don't have Saul today. So, uh, yes, so that, over does here. anyone have any other questions or comments? <laughs> uh, go ahead. Event sorry. OC3, um, looking for reviews Monday. So, some, something, something might come our way <laughs> on Monday where OC3 keynote around OC3 keynote and the password. This is kind of the design that Saul created. This is what we want to print out and distribute at our booth to promote your booth uh, and your engagement. So I know um, Manu sent us a note, so we'll follow up with you, but if anyone else will be there, I know we will have a bunch of our member company will be there. So please share the information with us so we can promote your booth as well. Okay. Anything else for today, folks? Great. Well, okay. if not, 
I think uh, as always appreciate the discussion and appreciate the participation. Yeah. Thank you very much, folks. Cheers, folks. See you around. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.